Hey guys, my name is Denver Riddle. I'm a colorist and filmmaker. And if you've been wondering, how can I get the look of my films to stand out and look big budget? Well, I'm gonna reveal how to do that in this Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. Final Cut Pro 10 is the easiest, fastest way to edit. If you're just picking it up or you're a lifelong user, you already know this. It's a fast, modern editor with live previewing while you're scrubbing, simple drag and drop editing, beautiful titles and transitions, and the magnetic timeline that keeps everything in place and organized like magic. But what about the way your film actually looks? For that, you'll want to color grade your films, and if that's something that you're new to, or if it seems overwhelming to you, well, not to worry. I'm going to break down the grading process in this tutorial, and we're going to create this amazing look together, which you can download as a LUT or lookup table to apply to your own footage. Now, while I am going to be using the built-in native tools, I also want to mention an alternative for content creators who don't want to specialize as a colorist, but still need a professional look on-screen color grading, Lightroom style controls, false color mode for landing the correct exposure, and real-time previews of LUTs and presets. You can find out more about the Cinema Grade plugin. I'll have a link for it in the description below. And finally, while YouTube is a fantastic resource for learning about so many different kinds of subjects, if you are looking for a step-by-step -step guide that takes you all the way through discovering the art of color grading and getting the big budget Hollywood film looks, I want to let you know about a free training workshop I'm going to be doing where I reveal my top color grading secrets. I'll also have a link for it in the description below. All right, let's do this thing. So to get started, we're going to work in the color and effects workspace. For that, let's go to window, workspaces, then color and effects. This will bring out the inspector and the video scopes. All the color tools we'll need can be accessed through this icon on the inspector panel. Before we jump in and start grading this thing, let's discuss basic terminology for how we define color. The three basic terms that we use to define color are hue, saturation, and luma. Hue is the name we call colors. Saturation is the intensity or vividness of a hue and luma is the brightness or shade of hue. It's also important to know how to read the scopes, which can be super beneficial. I'm gonna change the view to show the three scopes that I use the most. These are the luma waveform, RGB overlay waveform, and the vector scope. The luma waveform lets us correct for exposure. If I overlay an image on top of the waveform, you can see that the trace, the stuff you see here, actually corresponds with the image of the girl dancing. The trace at the bottom represents the shadows, and the trace at the top represents the highlights. The RGB overlay waveform is helpful for correcting white balance issues. It reads the same as the Luma waveform, but it also shows the color channels in red, green, and blue. This makes it easier to spot imbalances if either the image is too cool or too warm. The vector scope corresponds directly with the color wheel, and I've overlaid it here for convenience. It shows what colors are in the image as well as their saturation. The further the trace extends from the center of the scope, the more saturated or vivid the colors are. Here's a simple but powerful workflow for color correction. We first correct the exposure or brightness of the image. Second, the white balance or color temperature if there are any issues. And lastly, the saturation by either increasing or reducing it. This will make more sense as we actually do it. I'll choose this clip as our hero shot. Let's first make a correction to the exposure of this image using the color wheels. To the right of each color wheel, you'll find the exposure control. The shadow control affects the darkest parts of the image. The highlights affects the brightest parts of the image. And the midtones control affects everything else in between. The fourth wheel is the master control, which adjusts the entire image. And there are some circumstances where you would use it. Now looking at this, you can see that it's really flat. This is a very common way to see it if you capture in a log or flat profile. So how we'll correct the shot is we'll adjust the shadows while watching the waveform. 
We want to bring the trace and the shadows down until the darkest parts of the image sit right above zero. Then we'll bring up the highlights so the brightest parts of the trace sit right about here near the top. Then I'll bring the midtones down. This gives us good contrast and exposure. This is the first step. Next, we'll fix the color temperature since our image looks too cool. We can clearly see the blue trace dominating the middle of our waveform. Our goal here is to neutralize or white balance the whites. I'll achieve this with the temperature control which adjusts the color balance along the orange to blue spectrum. In this case, I'll drag it to the right adding warm colors and I'll keep dragging it until the red, green, and blue traces begin to align turning white. Now you'll see that the blue and green traces are aligned but not the red one. To fix that, we'll use the tint control which adjusts the color balance along the green to magenta spectrum. I'll drag it to the right adding red and then adjust the temperature control again until the trace turns white. For our final step, let's boost the color a little by increasing the saturation with the control on the left side of the master color wheel. Here's what the clip looks like before and after the correction. Doesn't that look awesome? If it does, go ahead and give this video a like. All right, now that our hero shot is color corrected, let's move on. In this next shot, we'll repeat the procedure going for a nice balance of exposure with the shadows, highlights, and midtones controls. The color temperature in the shot looks off too, so again, we'll use the temperature and tint controls. Lastly, we'll add some saturation. Moving on to this third shot, we want to match it to the first shot for obvious reasons since this is pretty much a wide version of the first shot. To save some time and give us a good starting point, let's copy the correction from this first clip to this one. We'll go to the first shot, select it, and use the keyboard shortcut Command C to copy. We'll then come back to this clip, go to the edit menu, and choose paste attributes from the drop down menu. We'll make sure that the color wheels effect is checked and click paste. This copies the correction and gives us a good starting point, but you'll see that we still have some matching issues. The image is too dark. To help us with matching, we're going to set up a side by side view with the comparison viewer so we can see both images and their traces in the waveform at the same time. To do this, let's go to Window, Show in Workspace, then Comparison Viewer. This opens a new window to the left of our viewer where our reference image will show. Now the scopes are showing between the viewers, so let's change their position by enabling the vertical layout. Now let's enable the scopes for the comparison viewer and set them to vertical layout too. Now if we needed to compare our shot to the last frame of the outgoing or the first frame of the incoming shot, just make sure that the comparison viewer is set to timeline and click on previous edit or next edit. In this case, we want to use our first frame as a reference. So let's change the comparison viewer to saved mode. Move the timeline playhead to the frame we want as a reference and click save frame. Now if you happen to save several frames, you can open the frame browser to select the right one. Let's close the frame browser and move the playhead back to the third clip. Now that this is set up, we can see both images and their traces at the same time. To match the traces, we'll bring up the general exposure using the control on the right side of the master wheel. We can now see in the waveform that both traces look like they're at the same level. That's a nice looking match. Now we can disable the comparison viewer and the vertical layout for the scopes. In the interest of time, I've already gone ahead and performed color correction to these remaining clips. But in this last shot, you'll see that the yellow pole looks greenish compared to the ones in the other shots. Well, what's really cool is that we can fix that one color with a color mask. So I'll add another color wheels effect. Click here to select color mask. And now let's click and drag over the pole to qualify or isolate it. We can click here to view our mask. And if we need to add a little more to our color mask, we can do that by holding the shift key and dragging. You can see we're grabbing a bit of the girl's clothes and the background wall as well. 
So we can further qualify this by adding a shape mask and position it around the pole so we're using both together. Let's disable the view mask option and now we can drag the master color wheel control until the pole loses that green tone. And BAM! But if we play this clip back, you'll see that the camera moves, making our mask move out of place. So we'll want to address that. Let's select the shape mask one in the inspector panel. And on the right hand side, you'll see the add keyframe button. Let's click on it to create our first keyframe. What we've done here is we've saved the mask parameter on this current frame. To view the keyframes of our mask in the timeline, select the clip and use the keyboard shortcut Control V. Then click here on the Color Wheels 2 effect and choose Shape Mask 1 from the drop down menu. Here, we can reposition the keyframes or delete them by right clicking on it and choosing Delete. Now let's move the playhead a few frames forward and reposition the mask. When we do that, a new keyframe is automatically generated. Now I'm going to keep doing this until the end of the clip, making sure that the mask always stays on the pole. And that's it. The mask is now tracked to the pole. Pretty awesome, right? Okay, now it's time for the really fun part, and that's creating an awesome look for these clips. The orange teal look is a really popular look because it uses principles of color contrast to make the skin tones or our talent pop out from the background. And frankly, it just looks awesome, so you're going to love this. I'm gonna reveal a quick way to apply this same look on top of all these clips, and this will save you so much time and ensure that you have a consistent look across the board. To do that, we'll highlight all the clips, then right click and select New Compound Clip. We'll give it a name, in this case, Orange Teal, and click OK. Now when we make a color adjustment to the compound clip, it'll apply the same correction to all the clips uniformly. Pretty sweet, right? If you're getting something out of this Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial, let me know in the comments below. All right, now let's create the look. This time, we'll use the color curves for more precise control. You can do that by selecting them here. Now, a quick crash course on the way this works, in case you haven't already used these in Photoshop, is the bottom point adjusts the shadows, the top point adjusts the highlights, and we can make as many points as we want on the curve in between to shape the tonal range. In this case, we don't want to affect the highlights or the shadows too much, so we'll create contrast in between these areas known as the undertones and midtones. I'll make a point here in the midtones and drag it up. This improves our exposure, but makes the undertones look a little washed out. So let's add another point here and drag it down to just the density of the undertones. There, that looks nice. Now we have much richer contrast. Now for color, we want to be able to push teal into the overall image, but without affecting the skin tones. So let me show you how we'll do this. We'll add another color wheels effect and add a color mask. Let's select our talent skin. We'll enable the view masks option and refine the mask by adding other warm colors from her coat now the trick to make this actually work, since we currently have our skin tone selected, is we want to invert our selection like so. We'll disable the view masks option, and now we can use the master color wheel to introduce teal into the image without affecting the skin tones. Now we're onto something, right? But we're not quite there yet. Because we push teal into the entire tonal range, our shadows also look teal, our skin tones could use some extra saturation, and because the yellow poles were outside of our color mask, they've become greenish. To fix all these issues, we'll add a hue saturation curves effect. Let me first show you a great tip to clean up our shadows. Let's go to the Lumiverse Sat Curve. Now the way this tool works is the shadows are to the left, and the highlights are to the right, and then anywhere that we place points on the curve, we're able to adjust the saturation for that part of the tonal range by either pulling up to increase the saturation or pulling down to decrease it. So this is a really cool way for selectively reducing the saturation in the shadows without affecting anything else. To do that, we'll place a point here so that nothing above is affected. 
and then we'll drag the left point all the way down to reduce the saturation in the shadows. And voila, our shadows are nice and clean and the skin tones and everything else kept their saturation. If I toggle the hue saturation effect off and then back on again, you can see the difference it made in pulling the teal out of the shadows on the walls, her hair, and the trash can. Okay, so don't forget that cool tip. Now let's jump into the Hoover Sat Curve to add some pop to the skin tones. I'll use the eyedropper tool and click on the skin tones to auto set the range of points on the curve. Then when we drag up on the center point, we can make the skin tones pop or increase their saturation without affecting anything else. We'll then just refine the curve to make sure that all the warm colors that we find in the skin are saturated evenly. Finally, to fix the color of the poles, let's go to the Hoover's Hue Curve and again use the eyedropper tool to select that yellow greenish tone. We'll then drag the center point up, effectively shifting its hue towards red. As a final touch, I want to apply one of my favorite LUTs from Ascend that's available for download when you sign up for the free workshop. For that, let's go to the Effects panel and under the Color section, you'll find the Custom LUT effect. I'll drag and drop the effect on the compound clip. Go to the inspector and use the LUT browser to select a send three strip LUT. Now at first it's too strong, but that's okay because we can dial it back to taste with the mix slider. What an awesome look. Now I know that I covered a lot of things here, but my purpose was to help you to get started with seeing a difference in your films today. If you're looking for an alternative that gives you real-time previews of your favorite LUTs and on-screen color grading, I suggest that you check out CinemaGrade. And if you're intent on using the native tools and want more guided help, I want to invite you to our one-hour color grading workshop where we reveal the top color grading secrets used in Hollywood on how best to color grade in Final Cut Pro 10. You'll find a link for those in the description below. In the web class, I reveal how I went from a wedding videographer down to zero wedding bookings during the recession of 2008 to improving the look of my films and landing client work with some of the biggest brands like Facebook. I reveal the same techniques that have had the biggest impact on my career. So if you're serious and want to be guided every step of the way, you don't want to miss it. I also want to point out that if you want to learn more about our Color Grading Academy, it's the only way that you can do that. People ask if we do formal training. Well, this is your opportunity to discover that and we'll have a special offer for it at the end of the presentation. So be sure to save your seat, click the subscribe button and then the bell for more grading videos. I hope that you enjoyed this Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. I look forward to seeing you at the training. Have a great day.